Our story begins at Sacramento State University, the college in Northern California where our parents met and fell in love. Our mom, Lynn, was a music major, and our dad, Mike, was majoring in construction engineering management. They say opposites attract, and it's true. Our dad grew up in a small town in Pennsylvania, and our mom grew up in Lodi, California, where it is completely flat. When they got married, our mom said, take me to the nearest hill. And so our family ended up in El Dorado Hills, California. Our parents are Catholic, and they were open to life, which means being open to the possibility of having a lot of kids because you believe that every child is a gift from God but they never expected that they would have 11 kids in 16 years. Our family was completed in the year 2005 when our youngest brother, Joey, was born. As a kid, I was perfectionistic and goal-oriented. I started making to-do lists when I was like six and cried when my ponytail was not perfect with no bumps. My main interests were gymnastics, where I was a level six gymnast, and swimming, where I was on a relay team that set records in our league. I also started playing piano at the age of two. As a kid, I was creative and whimsical. I also had a very strange, moody, and rebellious side. I locked myself in my room, pretended to run away, ate weird things like sticks of butter, toothpaste, and chapstick, and put gum in my babysitter's hair. I was always very social and friendly. When I was six, I became obsessed with reading poetry books, and I started writing my own poems to try to make my siblings laugh. When I was a kid, I was very quiet and I only had a few friends. I was a huge tomboy and I wore my brother's clothes a lot. I loved rollerblading and riding my bike and I loved singing a lot too. I don't remember having any thoughts or opinions as a young kid, but as I got older, I started thinking deeply about life. I became much more analytical and loved critical thinking. It quickly became one of my favorite hobbies. <laughs> As a kid, I was extremely social, outgoing, and friendly. Whenever we would have guests over, I would be their tour guide and give them a tour of our entire house. I tried swimming, but I was so bad at it. I also remember singing into a vacuum cleaner a lot as a kid. I didn't really have a ton of close friends. I mainly just floated around to different social groups and activities. I was also born with something called Turner Syndrome, which means that I'm missing part of an X chromosome, and that is the reason that I am so much shorter than all my other sisters. I was always very quiet as a kid, but I was socially confident. I tried really hard in sports, but I usually got like second or third place. I was also really deep as a kid, and I felt there was a lot of injustice in the world. I cried a lot out of anger and frustration. I was also obsessed with skateboarding, and I really wanted to be the next Tony Hawk. When I was a kid, I was super girly. I was obsessed with makeup, Britney Spears was my idol, and I loved cell phones. My first words were, I got it, because that was what my siblings would always say when the phone rang. I also literally thought I was a model, so my favorite thing was when my sisters would do photo shoots of me. Also, not to brag, but I was kind of a baby genius, so I learned how to read and do first grade math when I was three years old. We were homeschooled growing up, and our parents raised us in the Catholic faith. Having 11 kids in our family, being religious, and homeschooled, we never really felt like we fit in. A lot of times we felt like outsiders because we didn't relate to our friends and their normal upbringings in smaller families. The only car big enough to fit our family was a 15-passenger van. We would show up to church every Sunday, usually at least 15 minutes late, when all the seats were taken and we had to stand in the back. Our mom taught us to sing and play the piano when we were really little. She wanted to experiment with how early kids could learn to sing in harmony. You could say our band was born right then. The oldest three girls started singing in three-part harmony, and our agent, aka our grandma, booked us our first gigs singing a cappella songs at nursing homes for the elderly. Our mom even started a choir at our church so we could sing together regularly. We learned classical pieces like Mozart's Alleluia and Handel's Messiah. As kids, we also did musical theater. We definitely were not the stars of our musical theater company. We were in the ensemble or had small parts for the most part, although we did have a couple of bigger roles. We started out very nervous and shy to audition, but over time we got more comfortable. 
Another big hobby for us was swimming. Our mom was a competitive swimmer and she put us all on swim team every summer growing up. In the early to mid 2000s, the three older girls became teenagers. Our family had a pretty tough love mentality for the most part. A big saying was, walk it off when you get hurt. As teenagers, we were pretty uncomfortable expressing our emotions and we all struggled with anxiety and depression in different ways. Because of homeschooling, us older three girls started college pretty early. Christina was 16, Catherine was 15, and Lisa was 14 when we started. We were so excited to experience going to a, quote, real school for the first time. Christina here. As a teenager, I started studying psychology. I wanted to learn about relationships and how to be a healthier person. I shared what I was learning with my sisters and we had many long, deep talks about psychology and relationships. Our family also started having very open, honest talks. For hours, we would sit in the kitchen and talk about problems we were having. There would be a lot of crying and yelling, but it was amazing because we ended up getting so much closer. When I was 15, I made a goal to start a band. My mom said to me, you have all these sisters, why don't you start a band with them? But at first, only Amy and Lauren wanted to do it with me. Our first official thing as a band was walking across the street from our house to the park and having Danny take pictures of us. She was like six at the time. In the year 2007, our mom came to us and said that she had found an opportunity for us to perform at a charity show. If you guys want to, you can make a band together. Since you all play the piano, Christina and Lauren could play keyboards, Amy could learn guitar from Michael, Lisa could play drums, and Catherine could learn bass. Our older brother Michael is a really talented guitarist, so he became the lead guitarist. Danny was only seven, so she was too young to be a part of the band at that time. And that was how our band started. We only had four months to learn to play instruments so we could play the show. Christina here. For the next two years, we played any shows we could get around our small town. Charity events, coffee houses, and church festivals. In our town, it wasn't considered normal to do music as a career, and everyone just assumed we were kids doing it as a fun hobby. This was actually really discouraging. When I shared my goal of becoming a successful musician with people, they were pretty harsh and negative to me. Our parents raised us to be ambitious, and they really valued success and achievement. Sometimes we put a lot of pressure on ourselves because of this but it also caused us to be extremely bold and get some really big goals for ourselves. Even though we lived in a small town with zero connections to the music industry, we made it our biggest goal to get a record deal and move down to LA. We would sit in our family room and visualize this happening. It seemed kind of crazy at the time, but somehow we believed that maybe it could happen. Catherine here. In 2009, two years after we started our band, I had this crazy idea. At the time, YouTube was a much newer concept and not many people were uploading covers to it. I said to my sisters, what if we made a video of us singing Party in the USA and uploaded it to YouTube? That way, when people are searching for Miley's song, they'll come across our video. So we made the video and posted it. The next morning, we woke up and it had 20,000 views. We uploaded a new video every week and we watched the views go from thousands to millions. It was really exciting, but we also got a lot of hate comments, which was pretty hard to deal with, especially when we were so young. A manager in London ended up finding our Party in the USA video and she really believed in us. She had us start driving the seven hours down to LA to audition for the biggest record labels. This was insanely unbelievable for us. We went from having zero connections in the music industry to singing for some of the biggest record labels. In 2010, we signed with a major record label and moved to LA. This was so crazy for us. Our big dreams were coming true. Our mom had always dreamed of living by the ocean, so we ended up in Malibu, a suburb of Los Angeles. It was absolutely beautiful, you know, the ocean, palm trees, etc., etc., but it was a very tight-knit community, so it was hard to make good friends. Over the years, we made a few friends, but overall, we struggled a lot with loneliness and isolation. Even with the loneliness, we were excited to experience being in the music industry. Over the next five years, we experienced things we had never even dreamed would be possible in our small town. We walked red carpets, got styled by professional stylists and did photo shoots, met celebrities, recorded with famous producers, and even won a Teen Choice Award and were nominated several years in a row. 
Even though people on the internet saw us doing all these things that looked so amazing, they couldn't see what was going on behind the scenes. We would go into songwriting sessions only to have our song ideas and lyrics completely ignored. We would think other artists wanted to be our friends only to find out they did not want to be our friends. We had always dreamed of signing with a record label, but we had no idea going in there would be so much pressure to change ourselves and try to fit a mold that was not true to who we are. Christina here. One day, I got really fed up with it all. We were in the studio and the producer was playing this cool track and I started writing a song to it about how frustrated I was and how, no matter what, we would stay true to ourselves. Even with all the pressure to change, even with the loneliness, isolation, pain, and heartache we had experienced since we moved to LA, I made a promise to myself to never give in. Around the same time, Christine and I were really inspired to write a song that was personal and deep. Something crazy happened. She had been working on a chorus and I brought her verses to a song I had written and they fit together like they were written for each other. We wrote our song You're Worth It and we were so proud of it. We released an EP that included Renegade and You're Worth It and that was when we could feel things were really starting to change. Suddenly, we realized we could do so much more with our platform. People started sending us all of these messages, opening up and sharing their life stories with us. Suddenly, we had very personal, intimate details from thousands of people, stories that they hadn't even shared with their closest friends. Because of this, we started to write songs with messages that we thought would help them. In 2015, we made a huge change and we left our record label. Luckily, we left on good terms, grateful for the experience and the lessons that we learned. But it was time for something new. We decided to move to Nashville, a place where we could get out of LA, but still be in a great city for musicians. Moving to Nashville started a totally new chapter for us as independent artists. For the first time, it was all on us to run our band like a business, rather than relying on a record label to do anything for us. We had to learn how to be independent businesswomen, which has been extremely challenging and had a lot of ups and downs. However, we've accomplished more than we ever did in LA. Since moving to Nashville, we've written and released three albums of our original music, toured all over the world, written and published a book, and generally living out pretty normal small town lives. Nowadays, we seriously relate to Hannah Montana. We get to make music and videos for millions of people all around the world, while also living pretty normal lives. After all the crazy things we've experienced, we have learned that the most important things in life can't be measured by views on YouTube or social media followers. We've learned that red carpets, fame, and awards do not bring true happiness. What really matters is being brave enough to take the risks necessary to live out your passion and use your gifts to bring joy and positivity to people's lives. And above all, keeping the faith and cultivating those true relationships with the people who know you and love you the best. Thanks so much for watching our Draw My Life. We love you guys. What do you, how do you feel now? Oh, how do I feel? I feel so tired. <laughs> look, look at all these papers. Just take these and dump them in the graveyard. Look at that. This is the oh, workflow. Yeah. Make sure you put all the pictures back the in the work. plastic bags and bring them back. Yes, I will. How do, you feel, how do you feel? I, was gonna, I, was gonna I didn't do anything. Oh. <laughs> Amy, I was going to light them on fire. Oh, it's okay. just, okay. it's just <laughs> these guys over here. Hi, Clayton. All right. Oh, so. That. Yikes. Whoa. I have to go, guys, remember All right, guys, guys tuning out. This oh, is, is what? Is that your vlog? It's my vlog. Actually, I need to start I vlogging like to say, again. You should my, vlog. I like to say that my drawing skills in this video varied from pretty acceptable to mildly horrific. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. Like, this is my impression of a CD. It looks like a germ. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it looks like a germ. That's my pretty... final attempt was also really bad, but I was tired. It's all right. Cool. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.